Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O light from light, true God from true God, on this day make us worthy to meditate on the miracle when you open the eyes of the blind man on the road to Jericho. In your compassion, open our eyes so that we may know you and follow you. With the children of light, we praise and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Holy Trinity, the one true God, the Father of the eternal light, the Son who is light from light, and the Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son, one power, one authority, and one exalted God. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday, and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. Only begotten Word of God, born in time of the Virgin Mary, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You chose to open the eyes of the blind to teach us that you are the source and the giver of light. By your miracles you prove that you are the awaited Messiah of whom Isaiah spoke. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. O Lord, who has given us light, accept our witness and our profession of faith that you are truly the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Now we implore you with the fragrance of this incense to let the light of your knowledge shine within our hearts. May we see your face and rejoice and did Bartimai and the road to Jericho. And may your light shine through the world so that all may see your face and rejoice in you. We raise glory to you, to the Father who sent you, and to the Spirit, the source of all holiness, now and forever.
O Christ, you are the true light who guides all people. You shine the splendor of your radiant light upon the eyes of the blind. Through your grace, open our minds and consciences to the light of your gospel. Accept the fragrance of our incense and of our repentance, that we may raise glory and thanks to you forever. Kaddishat blind man said to Christ, All on earth be attentive, let me now behold your face. Reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, now I myself, Paul, urge you through the gentleness and clemency of Christ, I who am humble, when face to face with you, but brave toward you when absent, I beg you that when present, I may not have to be brave with that confidence with which I intend to act boldly against some who consider us as acting according to the flesh. For although we are in the flesh, we do not battle according to the flesh. For the weapons of our battle are not of flesh, but are enormously powerful, capable of destroying fortresses. We destroy arguments, and with every pretension raising itself against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. And we are ready to punish every disobedience once your obedience is complete. Look at what confronts you. Whoever is confident of belonging to Christ should consider that as he belongs to Christ, so do we. Praise be to God always. <laughs> Yeah. 
For the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, who proclaimed life from the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Mark writes, And they came to Jericho. And as Jesus was leaving Jericho, with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimai, a blind man, the son of Timai, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and to say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. And Jesus stopped, and he said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, he is calling you. And he threw aside his cloak, he sprang up, and he came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him in reply, what is it that you wish me to do for you? And the blind man replied to him, Rabbi, that I may see. And Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight, and he followed him on the way. This is the truth, peace be with you. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty unto God, unto the pulling down of fortresses, the destroying of arguments in every height that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. We are born into this world as exiles, we're born into a world which is originally touched by a grace. We mentioned it explicitly in the Anaphora of St. James. That God in creating creates nature, of course. But grace, which is, but a nature which is penetrated by the life of God, it penetrates this grace and sanctity and holiness, a vibrancy. And that grace, of course, is something that winds up being, in many cases, expelled, tainted, mutilated, stunted, and by our birth we are born just into the nature. It is that call of God which helps transform and allow us to become the people that we were meant to be originally created as. And this is why we've talked over these weeks about how salvation is a process. It is a work toward God. So it's when we say that we are born as exiles, it doesn't mean we're evil, it doesn't mean we're wicked, but it does mean we're a bit lost. And lost in the sense of wandering. God created us to be, ultimately what we would say these days, a pilgrim. We were meant to enter into the world by grace, and in that grace 
to come to know God and to see. But as a pilgrim, it also means that we have a destiny which is certain. We have a goal and a place where we know that we are going. When we don't have that certainty of a path, well, then we're just kind of like tourists. St. Benedict in his rule talks about the monks who never remained stationary in any of the religious places where they lived. They just wandered around place to place. In his rule, they're called girofogs. They just wander all around. It's why for the Benedictines, that one of the great vows they make is stability. I commit my life to be here in this community until the day I die. Stability. And though it's in a monastic situation, speaking of this, it is very much about the way our lives are lived too. We're not monks, not living in a stability of one single place, committing ourselves. But is an exile in the world without grace, far too many people live then not as pilgrims, not with a certainty of where they're going and the path that they're following, but they're tourists. Just gonna bip around, show up in Acapulco, what are you gonna do for two weeks? I don't know, just gonna enjoy vacation. That wonderful word in English, which actually comes from the Latin vacare, which means to empty out to just have nothing there. So the action of vacatio is the action of emptying out into kind of zero. Well, okay, we all enjoy that on occasion, to a certain extent. Of course, the problem is, is that we also realize that we don't necessarily, we just kind of like move around in that kind of sense. And that's the sense of the girovag, the sense of being tourist in the, on this world. And of course, then you compound it by the fact that our natural tendency is to fold in on ourselves. Then that act of tourism also becomes very self-centered. And then, of course, you just mix it up with a lot of just broken down families and a social order which is really wounded, if still existent. And you get a lot of angry people. You get a lot of angry people because they wander around purposeless. They don't see a goal. They don't see a reason for their life. They don't see a purpose for their life. They try to fill it up with shopping online and sex. And okay, that works for about 15 minutes, maybe a couple days. And then after that, there's just this hole. So remember that the idea behind this process of salvation is not God through philosophical arguments, but God who reveals himself person to person. And God in revealing himself personally has told us that in fact he is relationally three, what we call persons. God himself in his eternal existence is turned one to another in this reality of the divinity, which is why our creation in this world, we are created also oriented fundamentally toward God, which is why when our lives are living in that kind of spiritual tourism, we have this emptiness always. It's not satisfied because we are created in the very orientation towards the divine. It's the famous quotation of St. Augustine, right, that our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. We were created for you, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And this is a difficult thing to come to a realization because we have so many distractions around us. But in this world, so when we have on this last Sunday of the 40-day fast, because this Friday will be the end of the 40 days, the following week, Holy Week, is considered a distinct season, which is why I apologize. In your listing for all the ceremonies that start up on Friday and Saturday and Sunday and all the rest of the next week, I left off the coming into the harbor which is meant to be on Palm Sunday in the evening. I've mentioned it to many people. I was talking yesterday and not paying attention. And I've mentioned it so many times to so many different people, I totally forgot to actually type it out in the bulletin. So on 6 p.m. next week, on the evening of Palm Sunday, and this idea of destiny and our goal as pilgrims, is a ceremony called coming into the harbor. It's, it's a prayer ceremony, it's not very long, it's about 45 minutes or so, say an hour. But it is the entrance into the great week of the Passion. And so 
I just wanted to throw it out there as a reminder since I realized this morning that I hadn't typed it out. But it is in the Maronite tradition one of these perfect expressions of entrance and a goal. And our Lord is referred to as a harbor. So coming into the harbor is actually arriving with our Lord and the focus then. So look well at the listing for all the things that will be taking place next week in the bulletin, because there's a lot of things. Some of the days there's two things on one day. And so just simply note in the tradition of the Syriac. So when we talk about this tourism, this emptiness, whatever winds up being around, the question really becomes, what does it mean then to see? Why is this on the last Sunday before we enter into the Holy Week, the healing of Bartimai, son of Timai? It's the question, remember, he, when he answers our Lord, he just is, when he's asked, what do you want me to do for you? The modern reaction would have been, duh, I'm blind, right? Because that's, that's how we are taught. Forget about please and thank you, you know, and any kind of courtesy. That's just, it's like, well, you're stupid. Because that's the individualistic aspect that we see in our world, that we gravitate to quite naturally. But he doesn't do that, of course. This is a man who believes. He's been calling on our Lord using a messianic title, son of David. So when our Lord asks him, he says, that I see, that I may be able to see. And that's why it's put on this day, because really what the whole thing about the great fast is, is not whether you eat chocolate or not. The great fast is about the ability to open my eyes and my spirit, that I see better this year than I did 12 months ago. That my life is actually being healed and progressed, and that I'm making progress along a path to some point. And so as we mentioned that in the revelation that takes place in this process of salvation, it's not the God of philosophical arguments as first cause and all that, that is religion. Religion is about God in his personal reality revealing himself to us. Because in the end we are, in the Latin term, homo adorans. Homo means man, adorans. The individual human person is created to be a being which is oriented to adoration. Or we can say in a more colloquial way, human beings by nature are religious. Which is why if you don't actually find the truth in seeing correctly, you'll worship anything. Anything will sacrifice for. Because we have a natural tendency, because that's the way we're created, to go outward towards an infinite good that we may or may not see, but the tendency will always be there unless it's satisfied by grace and transformation. That's why over these last weeks we've been talking about the nepsis. Nepsis, which is translated, it literally means not drinking wine, it's the sobriety. St. Peter talks of it in his first letter. That's why for the fathers they just simply take this text out and we mentioned it in the context of prayer in that the nepsis is this spiritual soberness of the monitoring of our thoughts. Now in the context we can take the next step of having talked about this briefly over the last two weeks. The nepsis is what allows us fundamentally to be able to have our eyes be opened to see. Because if we don't have control over the mind and the spirit and the thoughts that we have, we will never arrive at what is known as the prayer of the heart, the prayer of the person. And the prayer of the heart is the contact with God. And it comes through beginning in the spiritual life by our prayer life. And this is why when the children are little, we teach them how to pray. Well, we're supposed to teach them how to pray. Not just do some prayers with them, but to teach them how to pray. We are filled with a world of people who have no idea of prayer. They've been taught some things, they pray some things, they may have done something at one point in their lives. But at some point, the prayer has to become our own, or it doesn't become anything. So we have so many 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds who just simply, oh, I'm not my mom's house anymore, so that's it. All done. Welcome tourism. So the idea of not being able to find that structure is of the central importance to our salvation. 
If we do not pray, we die. We will suffocate. We will not receive grace because our contact with that person speaking to us and revealing himself is through the sacraments and through prayer. Most of us are not receiving the sacraments every day, and therefore it's prayer. And that's why when we talk about these daily prayers, or last week speaking about the morning offering, it's the importance of forming that structure of some type of prayer, even if it's only baby steps in the beginning, even if it's only an Our Father and a Hail Mary and a Glory Be in the morning, but it's something that we still do in the morning to direct that day. Because that structure that is given to us, it in is, and in fact, it is better to do a little every day than to do a lot on certain occasions. So, you know, my weekday is busy, so I don't really pray very much. But on Saturday morning, I pray for like three hours. I just grab all my books, I do a little spiritual reading, and I do all this. And you're like, well, that's fine. But that's like saying I can't cook all week, so I will eat a bag of chips in the evening, and then I'll have real food on Saturday. Well, your health is probably not going to be very good. You'll probably become a diabetic. And it's the same thing in the spiritual life. That's why little tiny things, but done regularly with a proper habit and routine, is so much more important because that begins the ability for grace to touch us to begin this transformation of nepsis. Because it, what the adoration and the prayer that is doing is establishing within the human life and it fulfills within the human life the reason why we were created. So what we're doing is we're pushing you for this week towards the understanding that going to mass is necessary for this revelation of God, but it's not sufficient. In other words, we can go to Mass, but unless we enter into it and it enters into us, it will always remain insufficient. Because we are the beings that we are in our creation. And therefore, when we speak about this ability to see it is the entrance into the divine mysteries which allow us to begin to see more and more. And again, it's a progress. We will see more as time goes on and as grace penetrates its life. I've mentioned to you before, I am always, I am always taken back and quite thrilled that even after decades of priesthood, I'm always learning something new, always entering into something which also, of course, makes me realize how blind I was as a priest even at my 20th year of priesthood. Not bad, not wicked, but having not seen what I see now. And that's a different world. And that's why that has to be always our hope and our desire is that when we go forward, we're going to go deeper into the light and see more clearly. Well, that is what's accomplished by the mysteries. And that is why in the second point, we just give you that touch on the kadishat. You are holy, O God. We'll talk about it a bit more next week in detail. But it is actually the preparation to hear the voice of God in the scriptures. It's not just a hymn that we throw in the middle that everyone likes. But it is something that is done in order that we're preparing ourselves to hear. And of course, hearing in the liturgy, in the divine mysteries, is where we see and where we receive. And in receiving this gift of God's love, it allows us not only to render to God as best that we can what is due to him, but from our perspective, more importantly, it's making us into the individual people we were created to be. And if we don't arrive at that point, then we are nothing different than a beggar outside of Jericho, asking for pity. But at least that man knows what he has to ask for. We live in a world we talk about of exile and of darkness. It's not just simply calling names, but it's because there truly is a lack of sight, a lack of vision and ignorance to not know where we are going. Remember the quotation of Pope Pius XII, the sin of the modern world is to have lost its sense of sin. They don't even know what they are even asking for. 
At least Bartimai knows to call upon mercy from the son of David. And when asked what he desires, it's the ability to see. Because when I can see, everything else falls into place. Because I know where I'm walking, I know my path, and I see the destiny that I'm moving towards. So when we say, you are holy, O God, Kadish At. When we say that, it's because we recognize that there is the healing source. And we turn towards the Lord God. And day after day, in those morning prayers and those night prayers, in those daily prayers, we become what God desires us to be, not only seeing, but also people who are free. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, unsubstantial. confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the day and the life of the world to come. Itelot madem heida loho, alvata loho dam khale tayo, weinus votai votao ke ulal baitoch vesku dam chayet ho, hot ho dersho.
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary and Saint Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. Peter, Chief of the Apostles, on page 774. 774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Father, God of peace and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God.
O Lord, we bow before you to receive your blessings and assistance, for we are weak and you are the support and refuge of all. We raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, may the light of your face shine upon us, deliver us from every evil, and blot out all our transgressions that we may raise glory and thanks to you, your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and exalt you, O maker of all creation. With the angels we glorify you and with voices of praise. We cry out and we proclaim. Father, in abundant in mercy, because of your love for us, you sent your Son into the world, and he became flesh of the Virgin Mary for our salvation. He then commanded and instructed them, saying, Each time you celebrate these holy mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. Oh Lord. 
Lord, we remember your coming that saved us, and as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you, on the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy upon us. Turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we praise you, we praise you, we Annin Maria, Annin Maria, Nite Maro Chayu Karisho, Ona Chena Lainu Al Korbono Chono. May those who share in these mysteries be cleansed body and soul from every sin and receive eternal life. Amen. O Lord, accept our intercessions and prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shada Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. Assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your Holy Church, so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who desired but weren't able to make an offering, and those who assist your Holy Church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world. Enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O oh Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, St. Synesius, and all the saints, assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O oh Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rest among the saints. Remember those who, dilig who diligently carried your gospel throughout the whole world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Favor, remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant 
Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Pleasing oblation, who offered yourself for us. You are the greatest sacrifice, who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest, who offered yourself as the lamb. To your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father to you, to you in glory. O God the Father, you strengthen and encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Amen. O Lord, lead us not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive all their sins, for you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you the glory of God.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, O oh Father, for this gift that you have given us, although we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us, so that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, 
and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your cross, be their shelter and refuge, and perfect them with your abundant blessings, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. It's also just simply to note that this Friday is known as it commemorates our Lord's fast in the desert. It's Friday being the 40th day of the Lenten fast. It is also because of the pandemic, the only Friday in which we will do our Friday devotions of Lent. And you'll notice that we do do the stations, we borrowed that from the Latins, but we actually have a ceremony of the benediction of the cross, um, which is following after the stations. So for those who wish to see the Syriac hymns, to hear the Syriac hymns, and to see what actually the Maronite devotions are for Lent, you're welcome to make a note then of 6 p.m. this coming Friday. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.